In the prophet Jeremiah, we read this. I, the Lord, test the mind and search the heart, to give to all according to their ways, according to the fruit of their doings. Lord, test our minds, search our hearts, that we may hear and receive your holy word. Amen. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Strange, isn't it, how words we know well can leave us wrong-footed if we encounter them out of context. I know that happened to me with the words I've just read when I first read today's Gospel. We all know the Beatitudes, of course. We're most of us, I think, of that generation for whom Matthew 5 was one of the first Bible passages we were introduced to. In my mind, it takes me back to my first school, which means I can have been no more than seven years old. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountains, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and talk to them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Except, of course, in our lectionary today, we're reading not from Matthew, but from Luke. And Luke sets the context rather differently from Matthew. A great multitude of people from all Judea, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon, they came to hear him and to be healed of their diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all the crowd were trying to touch him, for power came out from him and healed all of them. Only then, after tending to the people's needs, does he begin teaching. And even the geography is different, significantly so, I think. Matthew begins... When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak to them. It's as if he deliberately draws back, so that only the inner circle can hear him. In Luke, he came down with them, and stood on a level place, with a great crowd of his disciples and a great multitude of people, from all Judea. Instead of sitting on the mount with a few, he deliberately goes to an open space where all the crowd have access to him. Only after the diseased are healed and the trouble are set at peace does he begin teaching. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Luke's version of the Beatitudes is much more down to earth than the more familiar one in Matthew. Where Matthew has the poor in spirit, Luke has you who are poor. Where Matthew has those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, Luke has you who are hungry now where in Matthew, Jesus speaks in generalities. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. In Luke, he addresses the individuals in front of him. Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. In Luke, Jesus is talking about physical real-world afflictions, rather than spiritual ones. Individuals, not people in general. It's as if Matthew is writing for an audience of theologians, people of faith, seeking intellectual understanding. Luke is writing for those living in the real world, those seeking to understand how an all-loving, all-powerful God 
could allow the suffering they encounter and experience themselves day to day, how he could allow that to exist. Time and again we see Matthew's theology as inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world or be cast into the outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. But look again at Luke with his focus on the real world and I can't help wondering if he has in mind, too, a more real-world outcome. I'm not saying one is right and the other is wrong. And I should probably come clean at this point and tell you that much of what I've said is a reworking of a sermon I gave three years ago in 2019, pre-pandemic, in other words, as I compare then and now. Much of it feels, if anything, more relevant now than it did then. Many of the afflictions that Luke describes, we have become used to finding on our TV screens, on the pages of our newspapers. The harsh reality of the world in which we now live. I wondered then, as I do now, how comfortable do we feel as we read the list of descriptions beginning, woe to you. Read on, past the point on our weekly sheets where the passage ends, and you find this. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. If anyone takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. To which group, I wonder, the blessed are yous or the woe to yous are the final commands directed. Love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Pray for those who abuse you. Give to everyone who begs from you. It's not a rhetorical question. It seems to me that some of those commands relate to those who are suffering. Others, to those who, if they do not cause, stand by and watch that suffering. Taken together, I think they pretty much relate to us all. All humanity, all places, all time. Love your neighbour as yourself. It doesn't get much simpler or more profound than that. Our ability to reason is, I think, the greatest gift God has given us. The thing that ultimately makes us human. And I think the thing which makes me a Christian is this unanswerable logic. How much better would the world be? Would life be for each one of us if we could all work, not for individual gain, but for the common good? If we could all follow that simple command, do to others as you would have them do to you. Lord, test our minds and search our hearts, that we may hear and receive your holy word. Amen.